shopgear.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Perez, and you're listening to Project Transformation on Gear Radio Network. Well, welcome to Project Transformation Part 2. What should I say? The second episode. Episode number two. There we go. I like it. See what you did there. Appreciate it. That's awesome. Yes, this is the episode after one numero dos. And let me just Thank add. Thank you for joining me. The first, it's the episode before <laughs> three. That's right. That's right. That's exactly what this is. <clears throat> that's where we're going. I am Mr. Perez, your host, joined with my, uh, excuse me, joined today by my uh, esteemed co-host, we could say, Ryan Wolf. Ryan, say hi to the folks. So well, you. Why don't you give them your social media contact, too? Hi to the folks, first off. My social media is at WolfBLTD. That is W-O-L-F-E-B-L-T-D. And uh, give me a follow. I tweet about a lot of good stuff, a lot of bad stuff, and pizza. Yes, yes, that's right. He does. Uh, You can follow me on most social media platforms at MRLG Perez. on Instagram, it's definitely MRLG Perez, but because this is Project Transformation, I also have a Project Transformation Perez that tracks the uh, the progress of the, the transformation. So go give that a follow as well. Uh, I'm just leaving work, heading to another job, but that's that's okay. Uh, the other job is is you know not really as hard as the first job. You know, I get paid to kind of talk to people and sell cigars while enjoying the cigar myself. So I have no complaints. Uh, not, Ryan, how was not your that day? Bad gig. Uh, my, my, my day was good. You know, like I told you, I, it wasn't too hard. I got to go on to uh, go to a vendor for my job and got to go see a bunch of cool technology, which is always a good day. Uh, spent the rest of the day working from home, and then I went to the gym. So you know, I'm not I'm not too upset about it. I had a delicious protein shake after the gym, and now I'm here chatting with you, Lewis. But what I want to know: How have things been going with you and your weight loss journey? Not bad, man. Things are not going bad. First of all, before I get into that, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I got a lot of really positive feedback from individuals who listened to the first podcast. Um, I thank you very much. Did, did you hear the rain? Oh, yeah, I can hear it. A little. It, it, it's coming down super hard. Uh, but anyway, I just want to say thank you to the individuals that reached out to me and, and, and gave me the feedback that they did. Um, there was a lot of people who actually said they they were encouraged by the first podcast and that they realized that they themselves need to make changes. And that's what this is here for. This Absolutely. is what this is a program to do. Uh, it's not just about me. You know, I mean, it, it is about me, but it's not just about me. It's about helping other individuals achieve goals that they need to achieve or recognize that they need to make a change as well. Uh, so, so once again, thank you very much for the feedback that you've given me. Please keep it up. Feel free to reach out to me at any time. So let's talk about my my, my transformation right now. Um, I'm going to be a little honest with you. The last month has been a little difficult. It, it happens. Uh, I, I got a little sick, like I said, on the last show, and it really kind of messed up what I had been doing. I, you know, I hadn't been able to walk as much. Uh, my legs were in tons of pain. Um, but, you know, I also, because of that, didn't necessarily stay on my diet plan the way I should have. And, and I fully recognized that that's what I did and that I need to make a change and get back onto it again. So, you know, just if we look at the, like the last several weeks of, of weigh-ins at, at Weight Watchers, 
Uh, you know, on, on June 9th, for instance, I was up 1.2 pounds. Uh, and then on June 16th, I was down 2.6 pounds. So that's nice. You know, I, I, I lost what I had gained plus some. So that's always nice. But then the next two weeks, 623 and 630, um, I went up effectively three pounds. Uh, I went up 1.2 and 1.8 respectively, but that's when I realized that, you know, I, I realized what I was doing, and I realized that I needed to get back on track, and that's what we did. Me and my wife really buckled down uh, last week, and Sunday, this past Sunday, 7-7, seven, seven, um, I was down four pounds. So we really, really kept track of what we were doing, we made sure we were tracking our points and our food, and you know the the results speak for themselves. I was down four pounds when I was at home, stepping on the scales, you know, and, and seeing the, the slight weight gain. I I went back to being only forty nine pounds down for the year, and and being above the fifty mark was a good ring. I liked the way that sounded. And so once again, I'm back above the 50 pound mark. I'm back down. I've lost 53 pounds at this point. So that feels good to say. And it's motivated me to keep doing it this week. Um, has there been, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm human. Sometimes we don't necessarily do everything the way we want to. There are slip-ups. You know, like last night for dinner, uh, I had Chinese food. I'm not going to lie. And it was good. <laughs> yeah. hmm. Is it all my diet plan? No. But I understand that. There was It was extenuating circumstances. Dinner wasn't made the way it should have been. It was completely my fault, by the way. Um, I sat down. I was going to make dinner last night. I sat down in my chair at one point, and I didn't get back up. Hmm. And my wife got home from swimming. She went out to Canandaigua Lake and swam in open water because she has an event this weekend that she has to train for. And she was like, you okay? And I was like, yeah, I think I'm good. Why? What's up? And she was like, it's like past 8 o'clock, and you were said she was going to cook dinner, and it's not started yet. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's completely my fault. Completely my fault. So we talked about I can make the dinner now. We can do this. We can do that. And then we ended up on just, you know, on just some Chinese food. And, and that's a there's a Chinese restaurant literally at the end of my street. So it was convenient, but it's also terrible because of how convenient it can be. Um, Absolutely. You know, but I mean, hey, it, it happens. You know, it, it, the rest of this week will be right back on track. And by Sunday, we'll see how it plays out. Um, I haven't been able to go back to the gym yet. And, and that's kind of bothering me. Uh, like today, my legs are really, I was going to go to the gym, but my legs are really bothering me. And I can't tell if it's the weather or what's going on, but I need to get back to the gym. Like, Ryan, you went to the gym today. Yep. You're trying to do, what you say, an 11-minute mile? I, I was, uh, I'm trying to do the, the couch to 5K. I, I stopped using the application. Um, okay. But really, at this point, what I'm doing is just challenging myself to – I started off, I was, I was doing the, the walk to run three, walk to run three, got to the point where I was walking to running through walking to running four. And then I, today I walked one, ran five, walked one, and then ran until I hit a mile, which was just a little over 11 minutes, but we'll call it, it was like 1101 or 1102. And then I walked a minute to cool down. Um, for me, I, I think it's all about, it's just all about keeping yourself honest. I mean, you don't have to push yourself too hard. I know for me, for instance, um, I've had, I've, I've got hip problems. I've had it my whole life. I start, the more active I am, the more my, my, my hip, my ankle, my knee on the right side of my body hurts, but you have to work through it. You have to find a way to make it work. And exactly. so it's, it's all about, 
I, I want to push myself hard, but I also know running a mile is probably the best for me right now. So I'm just focusing right. on, you know, hey, once I get down to a 10 minute mile, I'll try to do a mile and a half or two miles. Because at that point, if I'm if I went from a 15 minute mile to a 10 minute mile, I could almost run two miles in five more minutes than I where I was when I started, if that makes sense. So no, it's yeah, just, no, absolutely. It's like with it's like with the weight too. Like the weight fluctuates. Like a couple like last weekend, for instance, I had a, a wild weekend of drinking and eating a bunch of food at a graduation party. I'm normally, I would say, 192, 191, maybe 193, or around that, low 190s when I stand on the scale. I stood on the scale and was 200 pounds and was like, oh, boy. So I, I try not to fixate on the number. I know for you, yeah, I was going to say, I know with, with Weight Watchers, with you, you're kind of bound to the number. But for those out there who, who are, are struggling with weight loss, don't fixate on the number. Find a way to keep yourself honest. Set goals and say, you know what? I want to lose, I want to get down to, to, you know, for me, I want to get down to 190 and then I want to get down to 185. I mean, for me, I'm fine with 190. I feel comfortable there. I feel healthy there, but give yourself small goals. That way you don't feel like you're failing yourself, but that way, if you do want to go out and get Chinese food, or if you do want to take a break, you don't feel bad about it. You don't feel guilty about it. That's the most important thing. Cause once you start feeling guilty, the negativity rolls downhill fast. And the next thing you know, you're, you've completely lost any forward momentum that you had. That is that is one hundred percent accurate. That is very true. Um, I know a lot of people, and during our Weight Watchers meetings, you'll hear people say that you know they may have ate something that was not on the plan and they felt guilty afterwards. Food shame is is a real thing, and people need to learn to not be ashamed of what you eat. If you're trying to be healthy, just get back right where you were before. Uh, there are a lot of people who don't even watch what they eat, you know, and and, and that was my problem. I, I love food. I like really good food, and I used to eat a ton of really good food. So I don't, you know, to me, I don't feel bad, like, having the Chinese food last night. I don't feel bad about it. It is what it is. It's just you can't let it set you back to a buy place where, like you said, it cascades downhill. Um, and I'm not going to do that. And I know that. So other people need to realize that there will be certain setbacks. You just need to not let the setbacks ruin everything you're working for. And, and, and I understand that it could be easy to talk about it and not necessarily easy to implement it. And and I understand that. But we have to get to a point where if you're truly trying to get healthy and make a change, you need to get to a point where your entire mentality shifts for the better. Yeah, you're the only exactly. one that can hold yourself accountable and honest. I mean, it's nice exactly. to have – Lewis, you have your wife. I have my wife. Our wives are fantastic, if I may say so myself. Um, I agree. To- they they keep us they keep us honest when it comes to this. But at the end of the day, if I don't want to go to the gym and I vocalize that to my wife, she's not going to say, she's not going to push me to the point of where I'm annoyed and I go. If I say I don't want to go to the gym, she goes, okay, go tomorrow then. Because if right. if you if you feel like, you know, if you're if you feel like you don't want to do something, you're not going to do it. But it's nice to have someone there where you say, look, it, I know I need to go to the gym. Hold me accountable. You know, don't push me too crazy, but hold me accountable. It's nice to it's nice to be able to to have that because I've had enough times where I think to myself, you know what? Like I'm at the gym today and I'm running, and I think to myself, I only want to do five minutes of running. I don't want to keep going. This is miserable. And then once you start doing it, you're like, oh, this isn't too bad. I can keep going. I can keep going. Whatever. Oh, great! I, I hit a mile. Awesome. I'm done. A lot of the time, I right. go to the gym. I don't like to go to the gym because it's not fun. I mean, right. fun, fun is going outside and running around, you know, playing football, playing baseball, whatever. You know, I go to the gym and I run and I, I bench and I lift some weights and, and do some some small stuff like that. Nothing crazy, but it's not it's not designed to be a blast. I mean, some people love the gym. I Don't get me wrong. I have my days where I think the gym is the greatest place on earth. But most of the time, I'm just there pushing through, doing what I got to do, putting in the time. So that way I wake up tomorrow and I don't feel like hell. Right. 
you know, absolutely. I, I enjoy certain aspects of the gym. You know, I, I enjoy the fact that going to the gym is going to help me lose weight. Um, I love the pool. Like, I'll go walk the pool. And, and to me, that's a great time. Like, I love walking the pool. It's a blast. Um, I'm not quite to the point where I can fully swim, but that's what I'm working towards is to get to a place where I can fully swim. Cause I, I promised my wife, I told my wife that, uh, you know, she does an indoor try a try every year, uh, at RIT and it's 15 minutes in the pool, 15 minutes on a bike, 15 minutes on the track. And while I am not interested in running in any fashion, I do love the bike and I do love the pool. So I'm going to try to do this try and try. And and that's, you know, a goal I have. And I'm going to use that goal to motivate myself to keep pushing through and not let things, you know, stand in my way. Uh I don't know how well I'll do in the pool. I don't know how well I'll do on the track. But I still have, like, you know, a little over half a year to to get there. So we'll find out. I'm going to do it, and that's the ultimate goal. You want to get to an 11-minute 11 11 minute mile, possibly sub-11 minute, that's an awesome goal. I want to, I want to get to a point where I can do this try and try and, and not die, basically. Yeah. Um, and I think for you know, me, too, so, like, it's nice to have the big, it's like anything in life. You want to have short-term, intermediate, long-term goals. The short-term goal right. is to get that, that mile down to 10 minutes. The, exactly. intermediate, the intermediate goal is to run two miles. The long-term right. goal is to run a 5K, which is a little over three miles. So, again, it's, it's, it's not, you know, if my short-term goal was to run a 5K, it's very easy to get defeated. It's very easy to say, I'm struggling. Like I said, my knee hurts. Uh, you know, I I went out and got a brace to put on, like one of those little ace braces to put on it. You know, you got to roll, you got to stretch, you got to make sure you're ready to go. So it's very easy to say, oh, dude, I can't even make, a, I can make a mile and that's it. You go, well, what am I going to do about the other two miles? So again, it's, right. it's, it's very easy to get beat up and get down on yourself if you set your goals too lofty. And if you see that happening, don't feel bad to take a step back. If you say, look at, I want to lose 50 pounds. You give it a month and you've lost five pounds or you've lost three pounds. You've lost two pounds. You've lost no weight. Lower your goals. Give yourself smaller checkpoints. And you know what? Even better, if you're struggling with it, to start off, give yourself some incentive. Hey, you know, when I lose five pounds, let's go out and get Chinese food or let's go out to that that favorite place we, we like to go to or whatever it may be. So that way you continue to give yourself the, the positive motivation and and you have that drive that's still there because once you start knocking those small goals down, down, those big goals will come very quickly. I agree, and that's actually a good transition. So, speaking of speaking of five Ks, uh, in the next couple of weeks, uh, hopefully, maybe episode three, maybe episode four, um, I'm going to interview a, a good friend of mine. Uh, his name is John Escobar. Uh, he, he's, he's a, uh, a wrestler. I know him from the wrestling world, uh, him and his brother, Manny, God rest his, God rest in peace, uh, miss Manny. Uh, but John and, and Manny were known as, as really big dudes. Well, I can't say they were, they were, they were really big dudes. Um, and this year John has, has tried to transform himself, um, He's lost, from what I understand, uh, 70 pounds. Wow. Uh, you know, in the course of a year, um, he just completed uh, his first 5K uh, walking. He's walking 5Ks, um, and he's doing another one uh, this weekend. So, John, if you hear this uh, before this weekend, uh, I'm proud of you, man. I'm, I'm truly proud of you. Um, so, my plan is to sit down and talk with him and, and, and see what he's been doing and what's been motivating him. Cause you can listen to me talk all day about it, but here is tangible proof of someone who's taken the mentality that they needed to change and, 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 and is implementing it 
and, and making it happen. So that'll be a good conversation. Look for that coming. Um, and and you know, this was uh this was great, Ryan. I appreciate you joining me on this. Um, My I pleasure. hope that, I hope the people listening have been able to take something away from it. But like I said, uh, we're going to sign off now. Uh, my social media, MRLGP, uh, M- Mr. LG Perez on all platforms, except for Facebook. I'm Louis G. Perez on Facebook. You can, you can send me a friend's request. I'm cool with that. Uh, Ryan, why don't you give them your socials one more time? Your, your, your social media, not your social security number. <laughs> Absolutely. It is at Wolf B L T D W O L F E B L T D. Also check out uh Cheap Plug podcast over at betterlivethedead.com. You can listen to uh all of our stuff. We uh we did one last night. Shared it. So yeah, go on over there, listen to that. If you're a sports fan, we got you covered. Talking baseball this last one. It's very good. Baseball, the uh second half of the season coming up, the all star break is over. And we are looking forward to October now. That's right. Yes, we are. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining uh, me and Ryan. Ryan, thank you again. And thank you. I look forward to uh, episode three, and I will talk to you guys later. See you. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by The Gear Network. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Do you like sports, interactive polls, Friendly banter from two guys that probably shouldn't even be on the microphone doing this stuff anyways. Well, if you do, then you're in luck. Us two knuckleheads, Brandon and myself, comprise the Listen In Podcast. That's right, Listen In The Podcast. We're talking sports. We're talking news. We're talking topical things. We're talking all sorts of things, my babies. And you are all invited to listen in right here on the Gear Radio Network.